Okay, so now that the mouse function is implemented, we sort of need to switch uh, to test it out. And so we need to make the BP switch next. And in order to make the BP switch, obviously we need the meshes. So in the description of this video, you'll find a link to a Patreon post, which you can access if you join as a free member of the Interact Patreon. And there'll be a zip file attached to that post. And you may be asking, well, what's the point of joining as a free member? Of course, firstly, you'll get access to this uh, meshes for this course. And you'll also give yourself a chance for the Patreon's sort of automatic promotion system to randomly give you a 50% discount on the complete membership. So once you have access to these meshes, let's go into here and we need to make a new folder and import them. All right, so why don't we go ahead and do that? So in the content, click that, right click, let's make a new folder, underscore geo for geometry. Click on that, let's bring up our meshes over here. Take this and drop this into here. Okay, I'm just going to reset the import settings. Now for the common tab, the scaling has been outputted correctly, so we don't have to mess with it. And it's gonna be specific to the application that you're using to model it. So if you're coming from Houdini, you usually scale it up by 100. And you know I, I do like minus 90 or 180, something like that, but it's fine. And the next thing is that I want it to force it as a static mesh. We don't need to import LODs which is a uh, level of detail, we don't have that. Now I always take this off, recompute normals and tangents because we already have the right one coming from our 3D application. Okay, we don't need this because we have no animations. Keep these fine. We don't need to import collisions because we don't have any. We're not gonna use Nanite. It's not like a crazy scene, so we don't need that. No skeletal meshes. None of these, no physics asset, no animations, and no materials, and no textures. Okay, and this basically should be it. And just click on import. And there you go. And make sure if you drag in this SM box sides, it shouldn't be any bigger than this plane that we already have here. So just get rid of that. And just do control shift S. Okay, so if you saw some kind of import error here, uh, if it says like, oh, there were some degenerates, blah, blah, blah. And if you actually try to bring your mesh into your scene, if it looks fine, it's okay. Don't worry about it. It's been something, been around since UE4. If it looks okay, we can just move forward, okay? And the next thing I wanna talk about is the scaling. So if you look at this, obviously it's supposed to be a box that fits on a table. But if you look at the top view here, you can see that it's like 60 centimeters. Makes no sense because that'll be gigantic, but there is a reason and I'm gonna to explain to you why. Okay, so now in UE5, we have something called virtual shadow maps, right? And so basically, if I try to explain it to you visually, um, when you have objects in Unreal Engine and you're using the virtual shadow maps, which is default, and you can see that this could be, for example, a mesh, right? Now, normally, if you're in like an offline rendering context, it has a lot of time, so it prioritizes quality. So what you have is that, you know, the, the edge, of the context shadow will be like exactly here, and it will look really nice, of course. But the thing is that we don't have time for that in Unreal. So what will happen is that this is the, basically the voxel, right? Because uh, virtual shadow maps work with sign distance fields and it creates like a approximate map of how your scene looks in three dimensions. And so it, f it has to fit in this grid and instead of seeing this, it will, your mesh will look like this. Uh, let's say it's not enough. Okay, maybe yeah, that's enough. Okay, and so maybe something like this, right? And so the, the renderer would see this as your mesh, but in three dimensions, right? 
And instead of the shadows being on, on these perfect edges, it will be where the voxels are. So like that. And what I'm, why I'm trying to explain to you is because with the sign distance field, there is sort of like a limit of how big uh, mesh needs to be to receive shadows. And so, for example, you can have another different object here. And, you know, this is unfortunately too small and it's just going to look like a blob. So, you know, this will just ignore it. And this has been happening quite often with uh, UE5. And I'm sure that you might have experienced this. And just to avoid that issue altogether, we don't have to worry about making things physically accurate in our installation stuff because it doesn't matter and just make it bigger. And that's why I have the size uh, so much larger than it needs to be, just to make sure that we get good shadow quality, okay? All right, so some of you listening might be thinking, well, how about instead of like increasing the size of our meshes, couldn't we just deal with it by increasing the density of our voxels or the sign distance fields? That's a good point. And in fact, you can change the density here in project settings. You go down to the rendering, which is here. Okay, and let's go down to the distance field of voxel density. Now, you can already read this tooltip text. It says large values can consume memory very quickly. And it's not just quickly, it's very quickly with an exclamation mark. And this is like an official company, you know, like Epic Games. And they're telling you that this really is not something you really want to touch all the time. And in fact, I rarely ever increase this because it really does hit the FPS a lot. And in fact, more cases, I turn it down. I lower the value because I am, for instance, suffering with FPS and I can sacrifice shadow quality a little bit. And, and again, to do that, obviously you want the mesh sizes to be larger. So that you don't have weird disappearing shadows. Okay, all oh, right, one more thing. The shadow quality can change depending on your scalability settings. Now, if you have a desktop card, you can definitely run stuff in Epic and Cinematic, have okay frame rates or, or really good depending on what you have. But to be honest, on the laptop, you know, I kind of stay on the high. And as you go down, that threshold for the size of the mesh will it will go up, as in more and more smaller meshes will start to um, not be considered for shadows, so keep that in mind as well. Next up, I did say we should work on the switch, but actually now that we have all these meshes in our project, we should set up the static components of our project, so anything that isn't going to move or have any code in it. And so I'll walk you through it. And so basically, I'm just going to unpilot the camera. And let's make this plane bigger, like 10 by 10. And then I can see that it's very bright. So I'm going to reduce the brightness or intensity down to 2. The first thing is this, uh, where is that? Box, bottom. OK, so let's just zero that out and bring in box sides and then zero it out here as well. So it kind of looks like this, right? And then what's next? We need the top. This is going to be the half that isn't going to move like that, right? That's fine. And then let's rename this to floor. Take all these here and then let's click on this to folder it. Call it like E and V. For environment and the lighting let's see where we're gonna face so the cameras that way let's pilot it again and then let's just move it so we're kind of looking down like that and then why don't we take the camera and then let's do our there it is yeah why don't we do like a 50 mil or 75 mil okay that means we need to Zoom out, okay, maybe something like this, okay, that looks okay. And then now let's just change our focus settings, click on this and then just click somewhere here. And the focus plane, yeah, it should be somewhere here. Great, I'm going to untick that. Okay, and then let's rotate this so we have a better 
I think that should be it. You know what? I am also going to make sure it's this way. So 180. Yeah, I like the, how that looks. We can increase the GI on this one. So indirect light intensity, maybe three. And let's just select all this stuff here. And for now, I'm just going to use the default material. So show engine content. This is part of like the pre-included assets. So to search for basic. And I'm going to get one of these here. So that's very bright. Okay, I think that's fine. And then for the floor, we should pick something darker. So something like that. Yeah. And yeah, that's it for the static setup. Uh, we can probably do something more. Turn off real time. This shadow is very dark because we don't have anything to bounce the light off of. So what you can do instantly is if you take another plane. Let's just rotate this. 90 degrees. I'm going to zero it out and then move this back. Let's just say 250. Okay, this is wrong, so just do that. And then you can give it some other color, maybe. Let's see how this goes. I'm going to go five. As you can see there, you can have very nice lighting effects. And I'm just going to move it somewhere here. Yep. So this one is the bounce. Balance wall. We can have more than once, so just call it one and then drag this in. And I'm just gonna turn off real time again. And let's make sure we just save all. And now that our static stuff is complete, we can go ahead and start with the programming. All right, so that wraps up importing our static meshes and setting up our static scene. Apologies a little bit for being a little bit disorganized right there at the end, but look, we're already half an hour in, or a little bit more, and we haven't made anything cool. And this is what Unreal Engine is about, right? But be patient, we're gonna get to doing some cool stuff finally in the next chapter. So if you wanna keep learning, click on the next video.